What a whirlwind it's been in the world of Idaho politics these past 12 months. A statewide state of emergency because of a never ending pandemic surrounding a seemingly never ending legislative session to now a crowded field in the upcoming race to run the state in the future. The GOP primary election for governor is set to take place in about a year from now, and it's going to be an interesting one. Idaho's, Idaho's lieutenant governor is hoping to unseat the current one from the same party. And although it is not official yet, the current one isn't expected to go down without a fight. Not a stretch to say Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan and Governor Brad Little have had a unique relationship of late. The former issuing an executive order while the latter was out of town, who then had to come back to rescind it. Joe Paris sat down with Governor Little today to talk about the back and forth with the Lieutenant Governor and the relationship going forward and for some insight on the tumultuous legislative session, plus his perspective on lessons learned through the pandemic. It's been compared to when the parents go out of town, the kids throw a party. You go to Nashville for a conference, you know, lots of action happens while you're away. Is this something that was a concern while you were boarding the flight here in Idaho that, okay, we know that when I leave, Lieutenant Governor becomes governor and they could act? Not really, no, not, not really. It, uh, I'm aware of that because obviously that was a job I used to have for quite some time, uh, but I, I, I wasn't losing sleep over it. Certainly a unique relationship between you and the lieutenant governor, and it's not anything new. It's been well documented that there are times where it doesn't appear the offices are on the same page, but you've still got plenty of time before any elections to govern the state with the second highest elected official. Are there concerns about coordination between the offices or do you feel you can push through professionally and there won't be any issues? Uh, people might expect us to get things done and to work together and that's going to be our, my goal. I know when you put out your release a week ago, um, people noted that it was very strongly worded and something that some didn't expect. What to you, I guess, was the focus in having such a strongly worded and direct statement in terms of your executive order to undo an executive order? Well, I mean, it would have been, if, if we would have had a heads up, would have been able to have a dialogue about it prior to the issue, it would have been different. But the fact that it was, a, you know, something that we weren't aware of until the Secretary of State called me, I just wanted everyone to know that that's I don't think what people in Idaho expect. Did the events of last week change the course of, I guess, your plan of action or any arrangements you had for the next year? Is it to you just maybe just a bump in the road? Well, it was it was a bump in the road, but we'll we will get by. Very notable legislative session, of course. Everyone in the media we like to talk about how it was the longest. But when you think back to your state of the state address and the ideas that you had outlined, did everything that you wanted to get accomplished, get accomplished, or do you feel there was a lot left on the table? We gave them the ideas and they implemented them. It was, it took, it took plenty of time, but uh, uh, I was pleased. If you check off the items, tax relief, getting these kids caught back up, more investments in schools, the career ladder to pay teachers, and then of course transportation, which I've talked about for 11 years when I chaired the Transportation Task Force for Governor Otter, we finally got a big, bold, uh, sustainable transportation plan implemented. On the property tax bill that you signed into law, I've spoken with Idahoans, they said it's mixed signals because he did sign it into law, but in your transmittal letter you wrote that I mean, essentially you had some concerns about it, some grave concerns about it. I talked with the Majority Leader, Representative Mike Moyle, he said, well this is a first stab at it, we'll of course take this up again. Do you think the lawmakers could have accomplished more on property tax? Yeah, perhaps. It, a lot of my objection was the fact that it was kind of the last day and a lot of people didn't have a chance to have input. Uh, the counties were kind of okay with it. The cities had problems with it, but a lot of it is we're not sure how it's going to be interpreted. And we've been working on that. I've been working on it with the tax commission, with the cities, with the sponsors of the bill. And that's that's where, we're, matter of fact, I've already shifted some personnel at the tax commission over to help the cities ensure that they can implement this and it's not going to be too onerous. It's almost like a compliment of the problem that since you've been governor, Idaho is such a place that people want to live in. People are flooding in from around the country. Um, a lot of people talk about the conservative values in this state. Others just talking about it being a family-friendly area. 
and you can welcome all these people into the state, but how do you balance welcoming newcomers and making sure that longtime Idahoans aren't priced out of their neighborhoods and they're forced to go live somewhere else? Well, when I was in Nashville last week, I turned on the news in the morning. I thought I was watching Channel 7. Uh, they were talking about the problem with housing affordability and growth in Nashville. But frankly, there's hardly, I don't think there's any state that have the rate of growth that we have here in Idaho. And we're, as I say, we're victims of our own success. But a lot of those issues are best addressed at the city and county level. And we want to help all we can to help the cities and counties uh, cope and plan for growth. That critical race theory bill that you signed, there seemed to be two camps that supported it. Those that said, this is happening in Idaho and we have to stop it from happening. And then the other camp was, it's not happening in Idaho, but we want to make sure that it never happens in Idaho. Do you see yourself in either of those two camps? Or I, I'm, I'm definitely in the second camp. It's not happening in Idaho. In my signing statement of that bill, which I wasn't very excited about, I said what I really didn't like was the indication that it was a problem in Idaho. Uh, even the sponsors of that legislation said it wasn't a problem in Idaho, and it was kind of a blocking maneuver uh, to keep it out of here. I, I frankly don't want to talk about it that much because it isn't existing, and it's derogatory to the professionalism that's taken place in the class here, and I know there's just great work being done, particularly this year with all the sacrifices uh, teachers had to make. Clearly the news cycle has been very cluttered over the last year with an election and the pandemic. A lot of things have gone under the radar. I know I talked to lawmakers that say, you know, this happened, no one knows about it. This happened, no one knows about it. For you, what's something that we're not talking about, Idahoans aren't talking about, that you're very proud of and you wish people saw something had happened? Well, the transportation was a big one. That's one I've been working on for a long, long time. Uh, and of course, the first impact of it is there's going to be those orange cones out there and they'll probably name a few of them Brad and people might even run over them while they're uh, out there. But, you know, it's the right thing to do to plan for prudent investment in the future uh, for both safety and for uh, congestion because one of the things that when it gets all said and done is it saves people time, their most precious commodity. And another follow-up question I had for the governor is about lessons learned since the beginning of last year. He told me that, you know, for the majority of the thoughts he's had, he feels like they acted appropriately and he stands by the decisions he made. He did say, though, that, of course, there are some things that he would have changed. Um, one thing that he really focused in on, Brian, was the Department of Labor and kind of the mess we saw with unemployment and so many Idahoans suddenly filing for unemployment. And then there was extra benefits coming from the federal government. And he said if he were to do it over again, if we were to retrospectively give himself some advice, mm -hmm. he would work on the communication and work on the programs that so many Idahoans had trouble with. Because it feels like a year ago, Brian, we talked about the Department of Labor and those programs almost on a daily basis. Right. A lot of frustration there. And speaking of frustration, we're about to end those federal extra dollars coming up well, about two weeks from now. So we're going to see if that does anything when it comes to the workforce out there and get more people out and working these jobs that are looking to hire. Interesting to say that he, or to hear him say that, yeah, there were a couple bills I didn't want to sign, but I did anyway. Kind of says a little bit about kind of where the status of the legislative session was. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic there where you have the governor expressing concerns in his transmittal letters and then still signing them anyways. I know that for the most part, there are people that believe that the governor's job is to rubber stamp some things. Others say that the governor should be more critical of things. It is what it is. He signed them into law, Brian, and you heard partially the explanation behind why. Okay, very quickly, he did not tell you he is running for governor officially yet, did he? Governor Little has not officially filed to run for governor, so until he does, he's not in the race. All right, thank you very much, Joe. And Governor Little, still, as you said, still plans to run. We just haven't had that official announcement yet. Yet, that is. But that hasn't stopped a list of those who would like